I'm Bob Denton, and welcome to another conversation. Well, you know, across Virginia, there's been growing concerns over books in public and school libraries. And I had a conversation on the Botetourt County Library controversy with Director Julie Phillips and County Attorney Mike Lockerbie. But a group of concerned citizens have formed an organization called We Are Brace, which stands for Botetourt Residents Against Child Exploitation. It was suggested that out of fairness, I should have a conversation with members of the organization. And indeed, joining me is the founder, Christine Liana, and Chair Charles Rule. And thanks so much for being with me. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, so um, before we get into um, uh, the materials themselves, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the, the process itself and, and the evolution of it. Um, but I guess the first question is the same that, that I asked in the other uh, companion show is, uh, what surprised you the most as you attended the school board, uh, I mean, the, um, um, the library committee and the board of supervisors? What, what surprised you the most? For me, we assumed that once we brought the information to light, that they would act upon it because regular people, citizens of the county who saw the books were appalled. They were horrified. And so we assumed that once we brought this to the attention of our county supervisors, they would respond and do something about it. Same for you? Uh, yes, and initially two of the board members showed interest and concern over the issue, but then it dropped off from there. So when did you first express some concerns? Well, for me it was December 2022 when in the Fincastle Library I had seen on the bookshelf displaying the new DVDs, there was a DVD for adults called Bros, the cover of which showed two men grabbing each other's rear ends. Now that was displayed promptly on the shelf in proximity to the children's section, and I voiced concern over that. Um, and then subsequent to that, I've been talking with parents who had told me that there are objectionable books for children. That led to research, and that is what got this started over the concern from taxpaying citizens, parents, grandparents, and so on. Well, how did you discover these titles? I mean, did you do a systematic or, or it was uh, different friends or what have you would, would um, mention well, some of the titles? It was actually both. Uh, parents had come to me with their concerns. They had showed me the books and then in my research through the library card catalog, uh, I had come up with a very extensive and growing list of books for children and teenagers, fiction and nonfiction, that are sexually explicit. Well, um, the library has a very um, procedures, policies in terms of challenging certain titles. Um, and there's even where you can ask for a, a, another look or appeal a particular decision. Did y'all follow the library procedures? We did, we did. Mm -hmm. uh, the process though is a closed process. It, it's a closed loop in the sense that you have to do a book report essentially which is fair, and then you have to read the American Library Association's Freedom to Read and the American Library Association's Bill of Rights, and you outline what your concerns are, and then it goes to a committee of two librarians and um, one member of the uh, library board. After that, uh, a presentation is given to the library director and it's up to her. So she has added, our library director has added the majority of these books since her arrival in 2019. So she made the decision to add them. And so she has a final decision on whether to remove them. And in every instance, you get a form rejection letter back mm -hmm. saying that the books are fine. So um, at some of the meetings, y'all were characterized as perhaps a little uncivil. Mm, not at all, actually. That's, that's a false accusation. In fact, we're very uh, professional and calm in our presentation of the facts. We base everything on the facts. Um, we were actually complimented by Board of Supervisor member Amy White after one of the board meetings complimenting everyone on their calmness and civility. Uh, but we were at times heckled by others who didn't like that we were presenting this and brought it to light. Uh, in fact, Mr. Rule and his wife were actually heckled outside of the county administration building before a board meeting. So. Uh, we were very civil, but we didn't always receive that 
in return. Right. I've received hate mail, have um, <laughs> been called a Nazi, a fascist, um, <laughs> cursed at. Um, so I, I wish the civility would extend to both sides. So tell me about Brace. Why did you form it and what's its mission? Okay. Well, I founded it to bring like-minded, taxpaying county citizens together to share the information of what is in our public libraries being bought with our tax money and loaned and distributed to our children and teens. And su surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, a lot of people didn't even realize it. So uh, it was very much an eye-opener. So it's to make people aware of how our money is being spent and to protect the children from sexually explicit materials. Now you do have a, a, a website mm -hmm. and it will be uh, showing now. Uh, what's on the website? There's a section with excerpts from the books, um, so it, it, and they're quite graphic in some cases, so I would warn uh, adults to be careful about who views that particular section. There's also a section called Library Speak that outlines library practices, the American Library Association, how our library practices more or less mirror the American Library Associations, and then there's a section with resources. There are links to uh, studies that have been done to uh, uncover the uh, danger to children being exposed to pornography. There are links to detransitioner videos, which are just heartbreaking what some of these young people have been through. Um, so that's basically it. And um, so your position in some way of saying, okay, um, the library board is advisory to the library, um, but in terms of making policy, you think that it lies within the board of supervisors, is that correct? Uh, yes, if I can take that one, yes, it entirely does. Uh, in fact, um, unless it's been removed on the county website, under the Board of Supervisors page, it specifically states the Board of Supervisors is responsible for enacting laws and setting policies, appointing citizens to boards, authorities, commissions, and committees. And that is further validated by the written support of our Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears, by Congressman Ben Klein and Delegate Christopher Head, who have all provided their written support for our efforts to protect the children. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, I'm yeah, sorry. No, yeah. the, the, our library board is advisory. In some counties across the country, they are governing, and that would be um, a wonderful uh, change is to have them actually have oversight over the processes versus essentially rubber stamping whatever the library director wants. Well, again, we're going to get to some of the content kinds of controversies in a moment, but let's clarify some of the language. So, so for example, do, do you want the books banned or labeled with warnings or in a special collection? What do you want done in terms of some of these materials? This summer I went to the uh, Salem Library looking for a particular book that wasn't available in Botetourt County, and when I asked the librarian, uh, she said that, well, books like that, controversial children's books, have been moved to the parenting section, uh, the, the adult section under parenting, and that's an option. Uh, but as far as banning books, um, that word gets bandied about, but mm. banning means it's illegal. You can't access it or have it. And uh, these books are readily available from retailers. Um, but these books are available in our libraries with our taxpayer money, and that's the concern. Yes, and, and the, the word banning books, like Mr. Rule said, is, is often used and in, used incorrectly. We're not against banning books. We are, however, for establishing community standards of decency. Uh, banning books is, is not what we're about. There are many, many books that are not selected to be included in the libraries. So how many total books have been identified right now approximately? Oh, well. well, on the website I list um, about 70. Um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting, of those, I think 64, 65 have all been published um, in or after 2019, which is when our library director arrived. Uh, so the notion that they've been around for a long time is just not true. And our former library director, we asked, uh, did you ever have to uh, 
go through the process of trying to remove a book, which they call uh, reconsideration, and he said no, it's never been necessary in the past. Well, you know, what's interesting, you um, shared that you were doing an op-ed in a newspaper, and you wanted to just, that which was from um, eight-year-olds to 12-year-olds, mm -hmm. it was um, uh, agreeable to, and you wanted to quote from a couple of passages or show pictures, and the newspaper said um, uh, no, it was too graphic for mm -hmm. the readers. Right, the editor said mm -hmm. that um, this is um, not appropriate for our younger readers, and you wonder, you know, how young are they actually reading the newspaper? Mm -hmm. um, and a similar thing happened. Uh, yeah, there was a, um, a book um, with excerpts that was posted on Facebook. And this person, because she posted uh, images from one of the books, and I think this one is for uh, five to eight-year-olds, uh, she was banned from Facebook. Yes, and these are some of the books for children, color pictures. Um, some of these books, again, for children, uh, illustrations of a couple in bed, um, same-sex same couples in bed, illustrations of condoms, uh, talk about sexual intercourse, and this book for children as young as age eight. Uh, and so, actually, the Think Castle Herald made our point <laughs> they won't even publish it. The description of these books in their newspaper is a letter to the editor, but yet it's all right to have these books for children in the libraries. Well, you know, I have to, and, and, and I said this in the, in the other broadcast, um, I thought maybe y'all were exaggerating a little bit. And so I, I did go to the website and I did look at some of the material there. And as I expressed on that program, um, I, I was shocked, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm of a different generation and what have you, but I was, I was appalled. And I guess what struck me, one, I had no idea there'd be such material. But second, when they had the age appropriateness, two to six, six to eight, eight to 12, and it's like, my goodness, no. So for me, the issue is as much about age appropriateness was also kind of surprising um, um, to me. But you, I think, is it too much to say, not only is it perhaps age inappropriate, but you think some of this was borderline pornography? Yes, yes, actually it is. Um, one of the books, Gender Queer, which is coming into our libraries from Roanoke, and, and let's just say, for the audience's information, Botetourt County and Roanoke have reciprocal agreements, so the books are going back and forth. So when the libraries say we can't remove them because they're coming in from Roanoke, that's not true because as we've stated, the Board of Supervisors has the authority to make these rules and decisions. Um, but that is uh, illustrations, sexually explicit illustrations of oral sex, and that's in the book Gender Queer. There are other books as well um, that depict this. Um, now, some have made the statement, well, gender queer, that's for adults. Well, not necessarily. That received the Alex Award from the American Library Association, which, I, as I understand, is for teenagers. And in the example here, Sex, the Uncentered, Uncensored Introduction by Nick Hassler, this is for teenagers that ex describes for them all types of sex to engage in. It tells them how to find pornography on the Internet, it tells them about, what is it, fetishes and kink. And this is for teenagers. Mm -hmm. And this is in the Botetourt County Library. And fundamentally, the innocence of children is so precious and it can be destroyed just in a heartbeat, in just mm -hmm. one image. And that's at the heart of our concern that they're introducing concepts that confuse children, distort sexuality, and sexualizing children by exposing them to images and text that is just entirely inappropriate. You know, um, they would say, you know, in terms of these particular titles, um, they have a selection process and they follow the American um, um, Library Association and their criteria and what have you, and they have deemed them appropriate and okay, and that they are the professionals and so, um, therefore, it gets approved in terms of the selection. I guess I'm asking in terms of you think that they're using the wrong criteria in selection. And what do you say to them that says, listen, this is a library 
for all people in the community, not just a few, but also subgroups within the community, and we need to have materials for them. How do you answer that? For that, it doesn't matter if it's heterosexual or homosexual, sexual acts that are being portrayed, it's off limits for children. Mm -hmm. they, they're too young to be introduced and, and possibly have their lives ruined by being exposed to things that they're not ready for. Mm -hmm. And as far as the selection process, uh, one of the criteria that they use is starred reviews and the reviewers that they use, Booklist, for example, is at the top. Well, Booklist happens to be a subsidiary of the American Library Association. So again, we have kind of a closed loop with how all of this is working. And you know there are charges that you're anti-LGBTQ+. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is one of the things that they characterize your organization. And see, there again, we've been falsely accused. Now, we may perhaps not agree with that lifestyle, but we certainly do not hate them. We know people in that lifestyle. We get along very well with them. Um, so that, that is not even a valid argument on their side. And further, the national organization Gays Against Groomers has publicly stated, and on their website, that they are against this sexualization of children, the indoctrination of children. Um, they are coming up against the, as they say, the woke uh, schools and governments and businesses that are pushing this ideology in their name, and they are opposed to it as well. You know, some say, now, uh, when we talk about these issues, it seems to be political, that it seems to be the far right, or certainly, more Republicans uh, that are voicing this both from the elect, uh, elected official standpoint and therefore it's political. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that allegation? Um, I, I like to comment on that Mitchell. one. It is not political, but that is an excuse. It is not a reason. This is a moral issue, not political, although people often like to hide behind that term political. Um, and just to jump back for a moment when we're talking about the selection process by professionals, they do not speak for our community. Their values obviously are not reflected by our community values and they do not speak for us. So that's, that's one thing that we want to say, but no, definitely not political. It is a moral issue. It may ultimately be a political issue because across the country, as a solution, um, some counties have had to flip their board of supervisors to mm -hmm. bring about change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you say and, and would argue that the library has a responsibility to provide some level of protection in terms of children. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's been a, a, a big revelation to people when we talk to them about what's going on and about the books. People have the understanding, like I would, that I would go to the library with my five children and they would scatter and they would pick out things and everything was safe. But now there's an understanding growing uh, that we're trying to make people aware of. You can't do that anymore, that there are materials that you don't want your children to be exposed to that can be dangerous. And so people need to understand their assumption about how things were when they were young, when they had young families themselves, things have changed. Mm -hmm. And for you, uh, organization, I would assume that this is not about the First Amendment freedom of speech issue. Right, because the Supreme Court has ruled that the First Amendment does not uh, protect obscenity. And it's interesting because some of these books clearly are obscene, mm -hmm. and in the Virginia Code, you, um, there, there are detailed descriptions of what constitutes obscenity for the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And there is, however, an exemption for public libraries mm -hmm. and for public schools um, because of the introduction of sex education back in the early 60s, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so as long as that exemption is there, then the libraries can really do whatever they want. You know, it's kind of ironic in a way that um, starting July 1 of 2023, a new law went in the books in Virginia and that you had to be 18 to go into an adult bookstore. Mm -hmm. I wonder if some of the materials here would be qualified uh, as it relates to 
the standard of an adult bookstore. I just find that rather ironic. It is. Well, I, I think it would be because, you know, we had pointedly asked Baratek County what constitutes pornography, what is it? And they would not answer the question, but yet we have the legal and the dictionary definition of it. I think if you ask anyone on the street, they can certainly identify it. And it's right here it says the depiction of erotic behavior as in pictures or writing intended to cause sexual excitement. The definition of obscenity, lewd, impure, indecent, calculated to shock the moral sense by disregard of chastity or modesty. And certainly um, these books meet that criteria. Uh, and I, I would like to, to add too, to that, while we're talking about pornography in one of those books, uh, Sex, the Uncensored Edition, specifically talks about online pornography for te teenagers. Um, we have the report by the American College of Pediatricians, the impact of pornography on children. So these are all valid concerns that we have. So if, if they said, all right, all right. <coughs> if there was going to be a policy, what policy would you be interested in them having? Well, the library board currently, um, the five members are appointed by our supervisors. And they are all uh, former librarians, teachers, so they're not representative of our community. So we would advocate for having members of the library board be regular citizens from the community uh, that represent community standards a cross-section basically of the community. Um, I would also again recommend that the library board be governing a governing body and not an advisory body mm -hmm. so that uh, things could be questioned uh, versus it being a closed shop where they can essentially do anything they want. Mm -hmm. Yes and I would like to add to that uh, lawyer Lockerbie, the county, Bonnetot County Attorney had said, in, had said that people want a quick win rather than a debate and it's interesting that he said that because since January when we brought our concerns before the board uh, we presented a draft resolution I think this was in April of this of 2023 a draft resolution that would solve the problem that would eliminate the harmful books for children but to Charles point also open up the library board to a cross-section of citizens not just retired librarians but pastors farmers homeschoolers and we presented that draft resolution and it was neither acknowledged nor replied to by our Board of Supervisors. And that was very disappointing. Uh, our elected officials who are supposed to represent us, whom our taxes uh, go to s support this, went unacknowledged. And further to that, I would also like to stay, say in, I believe it was July of 2023, we had presented to the Botetourt County Board of Supervisor Chairman and the board collectively, the in-person ink signed petitions of nearly 1,300 Botetourt County citizens, and that number is growing. Here's the petitions to support the draft resolution and to remove these harmful books that are being bought and paid for with our money. This was presented to the board, and again, it went unacknowledged and unresolved. So uh, we have a couple of minutes or so remaining. Um, so what's next? Is it done? Is it over? They're not listening to you. Uh, what, what are you. What's your plan going forward? We continue to educate people, even going door to door to um, let our fellow citizens in Botetourt County become aware of what's going on, what's in the books, that they are dangerous because they threaten the innocence of children. So that continues. Our, uh, trying to spread the word and educate people about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, just exactly what Charles said. We hope to make some headway with our Board of Supervisors. Uh, you know, we have many times expressed the opportunity, the desire to work with them, uh, but they have remained silent. And, and really, it was very disappointing in our own community. We've lived here, you know, a quarter of a century and longer, and yet, they have denied the problem exists and they have deflected on this issue and they have minimized our concerns and we we have it on the audio recordings from the board of supervisors meeting what do you think what do you say how can you imagine when one of these children's books such as rainbow parade a color book for children about 
LGBTQ parade has illustrations of two men in bondage outfits holding hands and naked people. This is in a parade that children are watching. This is a children's book, and yet one of the board members, who's the library liaison, stated, oh, I, I have a copy of that book, and I received a copy, so I'm going to donate that to the children's section. What does that say about our community and protecting our children? We're not banning books. Like was said before, they can get those books from other sources, but we are establishing community standards of decency for what is available to children and teens and what is bought with our tax money. Well, believe it or not, we're totally out of time. I, I have to say, it certainly for me was generating awareness. Um, to me, I think there is a legitimacy of concern. Um, I guess in the meantime, though, if you go to the library with your adolescent's child, you're more or less make sure you go with them and then yes. not by themselves. Well, that is all the time we have. I certainly want to thank my guests for, for joining us. And as always, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.